Good morning. Um, I've had some of you asking me questions here about Delta Math, about getting answers in, and about some of the ways that Delta Math chooses to try and solve its problems. So I decided to go ahead. I'm signed in as a student right now, kind of seeing what it looks like on the front page here. Okay, some of those due dates have kind of gone biased here. That week two optional quiz is still coming. You can still do it if you need the extra points, just saying. Um, but I want to start here with these and to explain a little bit better maybe than I have before how Delta Math scores things, okay? When you see the percentage here, okay, that's your completion percentage on the assignment. It doesn't mean if it says 100s, you got 100, okay? It means you're 100% done. It's here, I haven't even started yet, so I need to start on this. But what this is telling me right here is this is the number of problems I need to complete, okay, correctly before I get this to 100. Now, so let's go ahead, let's go ahead and do this. Now, notice one thing here. If I mess up, it's gonna keep giving me chances, but for every time I miss, it's gonna take one quarter of a point off. So what does that mean? Let's say it takes me 10 times before I go ahead and I, and I get my six right, okay? So I miss four. So instead of getting six out of six, I'm gonna get five out of six because it's taking one quarter point off for each one, okay? So that's again, telling me what my overall score is, not just my completion percentage. So once I get into the problems, let me move myself here. There we go. Um, you do have the option of watching a help video. Sometimes they're helpful, okay? Now, some of you, as I've got my screen split here, because I wanted to actually do this problem, I'm gonna do this on a couple of them while I'm here, just so you can see, oh dear, it would help if I actually wrote the problem down right, right, okay. So my first job kind of gets us a little bit of review too. Isolate my absolute values. So as you can see, you're probably gonna need some paper and pencil handy for this, or pen as you can see me here trying to work through this. Now, this isn't alone yet. There's still a negative one out here that's being multiplied by it, which I need to take care of. So the opposite of multiply is divide. Notice I have not split this into two equations yet. Not until my absolute value is isolated. Once it's isolated, once it's completely by itself, now I can go ahead and split it into two pieces. And I'll make mention of this too with Delta Math. Delta Math does not have limits on the amount of time you can take. So if you're kind of taking your time and being meticulous, don't worry, you know, it's not gonna buzz you and go to the next question. Again, the only difference once we get them isolated is this one gets its answer flipped into a negative, okay? From there, we go ahead and solve. And I get what I'm hoping are the two answers. So when I go to type in my answer, you notice something, you're like, wait a minute. So all of a sudden a comma came up. You know, that isn't the way we've been writing. We've just been writing x equals negative 4, x equals 12. So what, what am I supposed to do here? Is something gone wrong? Here's where normally I would suggest, if you hadn't seen a video like this, where the help video can help. Now, just because you hit the help video, and I'm gonna try and mute them in a minute, doesn't mean you have to watch the whole thing. If the only thing you're curious about is, how do I type the answer in? I know the math, okay? You can pop the video here, and maybe, absolute value equation level is gonna subtract two from negative four, so we have negative five x is equal to negative six, and see where we divide by negative five, Okay, I went a little too far. So in this case, we're subtracting two. Those go away. Oops. Uh, now see, I'm hitting too many buttons. X is equal to negative six. To see where when you divide by negative five, you're still giving it a fraction. So negatives will cancel. So we're going to get a positive. So when you divide two negatives, you get a positive. But we're just going to write our answers as fractions in simplest form. With negative two fifths and six fifths. So notice, as soon as he started typing in his answer too, it automatically turned into this, what's called set notation. 
which is a very specific way of saying your answers in math. So if I'm just typing in my answers, whether they're fractions or whole numbers, that's okay. I can go ahead. I can do that. It'll ask me, do I want that to my answer? Yep. Okay, that one I got right. So notice now I got one out of six right so far. I'm 17% one-sixth of the way done. And so if I went to the next problem, I'm just going to throw an answer on here because I'm hoping I get it wrong. Uh, zero comma negative 13. Okay, submit answer. Yes. Okay, now notice your answer is not correct. Try to find your mistake. You have one attempt remaining. So they'll give me multiple chances on a problem to get it right. Okay. So let's say I try it one more time and I, I focus a little bit better, but I'm still try it out. Okay. That one I didn't get. So now notice my score, okay, went down from a full one to 0.75 because I got the 0.25 off. So when you get to the end, let me go back to the back now. Okay, I'm one sixth of the way through the assignment. I've gotten one out of my six right. So it'll give you a final score once you get through your six problems. But you'll get, again, multiple chances. But my main focus of this little video was going to be, let me flip my page over so I can get a fresh look here. It's the absolute value inequalities, okay? This time, again, there's 10 to work with. So let's, let's start with the level one ones. So I get here, oh, I don't want equations back, Hardy. I want the inequalities. There we go. Okay, so it says solve the following inequality algebraically. You're like, all right, we got all the same stuff we were working with here before. So let me go ahead this typed in. Okay, goal again. Get this guy alone. Two things to deal with. Adding 5 and multiplying by negative 4. That's not minus. Okay? Again, don't split until we're isolated. Take your time. See, this is one thing I don't get to see with a lot of you. All I'm going to get to see are answers. And so sometimes I can figure out what you were thinking. But other times, I'm going to have to hope that you are jotting all this stuff down. Oh, I almost made a mistake. Dividing both sides by negative 4 flips my arrow. And now that I'm here, okay, isolated my absolute value, we split. So just copy what you see the first time. And then the second time, we're going to make two changes. We're going to flip the arrow. We're going to change the sign. Isn't it nice if we get a little bit of a bonus in here besides just seeing how the answers necessarily work? And again, that negative still in front of the X means that's not solved for yet. What I've got to do now is divide by whatever's with X, which is negative 1, but oh, divide both sides by a negative. You're like, wait, I already did that up there. It doesn't matter. You did it again here. So now we're going to flip our arrow. We're going to flip our arrow. And one thing I didn't make mention of before as we were doing this, I'm just kind of checking my work too as I'm going along, make sure I'm not doing anything too crazy. Four, split those. See, and this is a good habit for you to do too. When there's not a time limit involved, it's good to see... Okay, because I've already had a couple of you write to me on things and go, I think you did this problem wrong. I went like, oh, I did, and I've made note of that on the video itself and been like, ooh, we got to, okay, this is an interesting situation. So here I look, and I'm like, okay, i got to be careful. You're like, why do you have to be careful? Solve it algebraically. Well, why can't I just write, you know, x, is less than or equal to negative 1. And then since I guess there's a second part, I guess I put 4, I don't know, x is greater than 9. Okay. You're like, well, do I have to put the or in there? Well, here's, again, I go back to the video. 
I fast forward to the end, I want to see how they do the answer. Okay, so looks like that's how I do it. Now, I hit submit answer. Do you want to submit? Yes. Okay. So we go ahead. Now, here's one thing I don't like about what they do. So they show the whole expression here. Here's what I'm not a fan of. I am not a fan of, they make equations first. Ugh. I don't like that. Some of the videos Delta Math does is spot on awesome. Okay. This is one of them. They're not. So if you ever look at one of their videos for help and you're like, whoa, what is going on with that? Go back and watch what I'm doing. Or if you can figure it out this way and like it, that's great. But some of you wrote to me and you're like, they're not doing it anywhere like you are. You're right. And I think they make it more complicated. Because they get it into equations, and then they plug it in, and then they do true-false statements, and then they check numbers, and then they put this down. I'm like, that is way too much stuff to be doing. Okay. But here's the other little trick in knowing when you're doing these, if you're doing things right. When you get to your initial inequality that you're splitting, we talked when we were back doing this about and versus or, about how... When we have an and statement, okay, what's typically going to happen is you're going to have your absolute value. It's going to be less than. And we know what the graph would look like. And then we talked about or and how that's when the absolute value is greater than, like it is in this case, and how the graphs are going out. So if you weren't sure sometime, is it, do I put or in the middle, or does it have to be a compound inequality? You can kind of do a quick sketch of these and be like, okay, so negative 1 and 9. X is less than, the arrow is pointing at, less than goes left. X is greater than or equal to 9. Oh, that goes right. And then you can see, oh, that's or, because or goes out. Okay, those little things we talked about before in trying to make things go better. Now, let me see if I can find, hang on just a second here. I want to find, yes, I want to do one more because I want to do an and statement just so you can see how that's going to look too. I, I don't want you typing in the answer to be a reason you're missing stuff because it's about the algebra here. So this time, I'm not going to talk as much during the problem. Oh, no, that's going to flip again. Hang on, I'm going to find a different one. I want to make sure. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting I'm not in the teacher mode of this. <laughs> okay, let's let's come down again. Okay, I don't want you ever giving up, but I'm just gonna give up. We keep. Oh, did I go too fast and it was gonna be? Oh man. Okay. Life happens. Okay, this one for sure is an ant. Here we go. How many teachers you got out there that just go kind of live like this and don't need everything to be just so? All right. So it's hardy in fast forward mode so we can get to the answer part. And you're like, so Hardy, how did you know this was, was an and again? Because I did a couple of things when I was looking forward. First, I noticed absolute value was less than. Then I looked to make sure the X wasn't negative, so it was going to flip, which it's not. So here we go. So 3 plus 3X is less than or equal to 9. And knowing that it's and or or can really help you knowing if you're doing something right or not. Flip the arrow, change the sign. All right. So 3X is less than or equal to 6. I subtracted the 3. Subtract the 3 over here as well. X is less than or equal to 2. And X is greater than or equal to negative 4. Okay. So how am I going to put the AND statement in? Well, this gets a little more hairy because there's not an AND button. So let's try something. Let's try X is less than or equal to 2 and x is 
greater than or equal to negative 4. Now let's see if it lets me do this. Okay, now it's telling me my answer's not right. It is, but they don't like the way that I wrote it. So here's what we're gonna do. Okay, so what does it want me to do? Sometimes when you're writing and statements, they're written as compound inequalities, okay? So if you think back to when we were graphing, And I went to graph this, and I was like, okay, x is less than, that's left, or equal to 2. x is greater than or equal to negative 4. And they come together in the middle. When I went to do interval notation on this, okay, we had negative 4 to 2. Now, they're not asking for interval notation. They're asking for algebraically. You're like, dude, then get to the point. The other way I can write this, is I put my smaller number on the left, my bigger number on the right, and put these in. These two are the same thing. X is greater than or equal to negative 4. X is less than or equal to 2. So I should, this ought to be interesting, X which is less than Okay. Now, if this one goes haywire on me, Hardy's about smoke's going to be coming out of my ears. Okay. So that is the way that you are going to have to write answers if they are and statements. Yes, it is exactly the same as if you wrote it out like this, wrote it out like this, graphed it, whatever. But we have to be flexible. Okay, and you have to be able to recognize this. When you get to standardized testing, some of you that are be doing SAT stuff here in less than a month, you've got to know that those are the same thing. Otherwise, you're going to be looking at the question going, it's no solution. It's something like that. So we just got to keep working through those things. Okay. And so again, notice, even though it took me until time number two, I didn't get a penalty because I still got my problem right. So they give you a freebie before they do the penalty but then go like that, okay? So that's how the delta math works with this. So if you end up with other questions, please let me know. I appreciate those of you that reached out to me so I knew this so I could make a video. And I'll be checking in for sure with some other stuff coming up soon.